Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love, and I'm here with my twin sister, Lynn. I want to ask you some questions. You've had quite a few demonic attacks in the past, haven't you? Uh, yes, I've had uh, four that I can recall. <laughs> uh, demons are real. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And uh, like the wind, you can't see it, but it really, really, really exists. Hello. Um, uh, by the way, uh, we're at a restaurant, and we can't turn down the music, so if that bothers you, I'm sorry, but this is, this is the only cool place in town. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, the reason that demons attack is because you're doing something that uh, is helping God's kingdom. And they really do not like that one one little bit. And they attack because they want to scare you. They want to scare you from doing any kind of work for the kingdom. They want to uh, stop what you're doing. and. Um, the reason that I had been attacked uh, quite a bit was I was working at a homeless shelter where they were serving food and I did uh, the clothing distribution as well as uh, uh, praying for people uh, for their feet plantar fasciitis or, or uh, their legs hurting or uh, uh, headaches, uh, toothaches, uh, a job that they possibly wanted to uh, get. I would pl uh, pray for uh, favor in getting that job. Uh, and I guess I was somewhat getting somewhat of a reputation as uh, a person that was getting results because the homeless people would actually come up to me and say, hey, I heard you could, you know. Now keep in mind, I don't do anything. It is God that does it. I am just a conduit uh, to pray for the person. I have no powers. <laughs> just like anyone else, no one has powers. It's done through God. And it's done through faith. And um, that is pretty much how I was in a situation where the demons really did not like what I was doing. Why do demons reside in people? Well, they reside in people because I, I believe they're disembodied entities that need a home. And they decide to pick a person by their sin. So, if you are a liar and a cheat, you're going to have uh, many demons looking for a home in you that are interested in lying and cheating. That's their, their favorite thing. Uh, if you have more sins, they'll, they'll all pack in, they don't care. Um, so the bottom line is, you don't want to have sin in your life, and if you do, you're going to have lots of demons living within you. Um, Can I ask you a question, Lynn? Mm -hmm. Sure. Is it similar to having, like, old garbage sitting around too long in the heat? <laughs> Probably so. And when you have flies come around, yeah. it draws more yeah. and more flies, yeah. and before you know it, you've got a swarm on your hand. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, okay. there's 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 a lot of them that, that come up. And uh, how a demon gets permission uh, to go in a person is by you having that sin. If you get rid of those sins, then you can get rid of that, that demon. Go on. I want to hear you cut to the chase. I want to hear about your experiences and how you handle them. Okay. Well, there was this uh, one gentleman who came to me at the homeless center, uh, and I had been doing this for a little bit, and and people were starting to ask for me to do certain things like, you know, for headaches, etc. And he sat down next to me, and he says, I need your help, I need your help. I said, well, what's happening? And he wouldn't tell me. And I sort of thought it was a demon, so I immediately just sort of zoomed in and, and said, hey, listen, you know, there are uh, things that bother people, and uh, sometimes, uh, let's just take for instance, lust, and uh, people are bothered by these demons, and they keep on redoing the sin, and redoing the sin can't seem to get through with it. Well, it turns out, just by chance, that it was exactly his sin. 
And so I said, well, you have to make sure that you really, really want to get rid of this, this demon because if, if you decide that we're going to have this extraction and then you go back to it, you can have seven times more um, um, demons come in you. So uh, do you, are you sure you want to do it? Like, yeah, 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 it's driving me nuts. I can't stand it. It's this my whole life practically. So we went outside, away from everyone, and uh, we started, uh, you know, with him saying he wanted to get rid of them, etc. Uh, and after about half hour, hour, I don't remember, uh, uh, he said he felt so much better, so much lighter. He felt that. Uh, that something was definitely different. I said, well, that's great. That's wonderful. And, um, and uh, basically, I'll go back to the end of that story in a second, but I went to the next person who needed, had a hip that was sort of out, and I started praying for that person. Well, the demons were really mad at me from the previous person because that, that's their home. They live in people. Right. And they've been there for ages, so mm -hmm. they don't want to leave. So, and I had not prayed before I had worked on the first person, mm -hmm. which is a big mistake. I did not cover myself in the blood. I didn't do Ephesians. I, big mistake. So anyhow, so uh, I'm working on this other person. And, Wham! I get hit with a ten headache. Mm. It was unbelievable. I, could, I couldn't even think. And um, and I had to stop. I had to stop. I said, listen, I'm really sorry, but I have gotten a headache that is unbelievable. I, I just can't even think. So I, yeah, so I stopped and I started casting out uh, migraines. I started casting out uh, uh, headaches. Uh, uh, what and, kind of stuff did you say? Oh, I said, you know, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I mind break and cancel all assignments of the enemy, of uh, headaches, uh, migraines, uh, uh, any demons uh, causing any problems must leave me now. You have no right nor, nor no authority. In Jesus' name, you must go. But in about five minutes, this headache just dissipated. Right. Which was unreal because I've had headaches my, my whole life, and they take hours to create and many hours to get rid of. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, so uh, I go and find the other gentleman I was working on because I wasn't going to let the demons take take advantage of me. I had heard enough that you don't do that. You make sure you go right back to what you were doing right. because uh, you're going to show them that you're not going to take that garbage from mm -hmm. them. So anyhow, um, at that point, I went back to him, took care of him. He said he felt a difference in his hip immediately. and Hey, that was great, and Excellent. that was good. And uh, so going back to the first guy, he was really great for, I'd say, about six months. Oh. He, he was fantastic. He would come in thanking me and saying it was wonderful not having these demons, and he, he was just really excited, and he was doing really good things, and, and then he had a couple setbacks, like maybe month four, month five, and I think that really got him out of the mood, and at that point, I didn't see him again after month six, and I sort of feel that he probably went back to his sin, but, uh, but remember, sin is a choice. Right. And if you go back to it, it's your choice. You can't say to God, I didn't know, you know. Right. Anyhow, so that was that experience. May I add to that? Oh, absolutely. The, the one thing that we forget, you know, we want God to wave the magic wand and we want to walk away and everything's fine and dandy. But we have to remember that part of our deliverance is based on obedience. The Bible says you must resist the devil and he will flee. Absolutely. So you not only rebuke the devil, you resist the devil. That's correct. And that engages your will. And that's another thing that I might add to that is if you think that you can just say, I believe in God and I call it a day and say, I'm great now. Uh-uh. That's not how it works. James chapter 2 says this very clearly. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, 
that faith without works is dead. Right. You are expected to follow his rules. That's what the Bible is all about. It's about rules and what he expects and what he doesn't expect. Right. Just because you think or you've convoluted that Bible somehow, uh-uh. You know better. Right. Okay, the next time that I was attacked, uh, let me give you the setting here. I'm in a, a closet off of a dining room where they feed people, uh, the homeless people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, the di uh, in the closet, I, I hand out all sorts of clothing and shoes and et cetera, et cetera. And um, anyhow, so... What had happened was I noticed, uh, I couldn't see the dining room, but I noticed that there was uh, a huge argument and people fighting, and I decided to try to calm the situation uh, in a very low voice in the um, closet. I, in a very low voice, decided to calm the situation, and I said, you know, in the mighty name of Jesus, all fighting is to stop now. No more arguments, no more hatred, no more uh, attacks. You are to leave. You are to leave now in Jesus' name. And I repeat it a couple times. And within about a minute, I see someone sticking their head into the closet. And they're, I'm going, and they're staring me down. And it's the person who, I guess, was arguing because they knew, the demons knew exactly what I was doing inside, even though they the person couldn't hear right. the demons knew yes <laughs> and uh so anyhow so i just stirred back and they left another minute or two goes by i hear the fight started again i thought uh -uh, they ain't going to get away with this so again i pray in the mighty name of jesus all attacks are to stop all arguments are to stop you are to leave this place you are to leave this place now in jesus name and as i i prayed that within about a minute all of a sudden i hear this demon or person leaving the side door which was one of those doors that said do not leave alarmed except I had never seen I had been there for a while already and I had never seen anyone leaving that door ever 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 no one and this demon went and exited that door and that took care of the argument look at that yeah. look at that yeah it was it was interesting <laughs> yeah. and then I had another occurrence uh, at the homeless center and uh, you see the trend here it's uh, mm -hmm. That's because I'm doing work there, and exactly. they do not like that. <laughs> so anyhow, so I'm again in the closet passing out uh, clothing, and um, uh, one guy comes in, which sort of, I don't have a good feeling about this person. They're just hanging around. They're, they're not really wanting clothing. They're, you know, I asked him numerous times, can I help you with something? And he said, well, I want to play, play a, uh, a song for you. I says, well, I don't have time. You know, I'm, I'm, but you could see I have five, six people in here right now. I don't have time to, to listen to your music. Uh, I says, can I get you some kind of clothing? He says, no. He says, I want to play you a song, and he just wouldn't let up. So 20 minutes later, I'm at a point where I'm going, well, the only way I'm going to get rid of this guy is letting him to play the song for me. Well, what's interesting about this is absolutely no one at that center really knew who I was, really didn't know much about me, didn't quite understand uh, uh, anything about me it's certainly not my my musical tastes <laughs> and I had that the week downloaded a song called a Mary did you know and uh, and it's about the birth of uh, Jesus and, and that he's gonna you know give sight to the blind and you know etc etc well anyhow so uh, no one knew I had downloaded that song many times and, and and set up a recording that I was listening to all week. Okay, so anyhow, so the guy says, uh, I want, want to play a song for you. So I said, okay, go ahead and play the song. So he pushes the button, 
Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? And I, I turned white, I think. <laughs> and um, so if you wonder what they know about you, they know a lot about you. If you think that they don't, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, so um, I, uh, I looked at him, he says, that song is about my master. And I stopped, I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of here now. Get out of here now. And then I called the security guard. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was that that was a real shock to me because as I said, no one no one knew my musical taste. I, I don't sing. You could attest to that now that you've listened to me sing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, pretty much that was that was what happened with that one. So you knew he was talking about the devil, not Jesus. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, he just didn't look right to right. me. Something was very wrong with him to begin right. with. So. Right. And, wow. You know, yeah. Um, that reminds me of one time that I was passing out literature uh, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a guy on a bike, and I would go with one person who would do preaching. And so what happened was uh, this bike went by, and I just knew this guy was demonically possessed. And I said to my friend Jordan, I says, Jordan, I says, you watch that, that bike is going to come back and cause trouble. You just watch. Five minutes later, that bike came back and... <laughs> <laughs> and yes, he caused trouble. Anyhow, mm -hmm. okay. So I have one last story, mm -hmm. and uh, this did not take place at the homeless center. This took place over at the Grove in Hollywood mm -hmm. area, and uh, I went to the movies there, and uh, I was getting some donuts. And as I was getting donuts, um, um, I noticed that the cashier donut person had uh, stolen money basically mm. with how he was ringing it up on the cash register and I called him on it which I obviously in his mind shouldn't have mm. <laughs> so anyhow so uh, I didn't think too much of it I left that was that uh, and as I was leaving the parking lot that evening, it was very dark out, uh, mm. my husband was driving, and as I left, I saw this demonic figure Look at that. in the park. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna stop looking at it because I wanna see what happens. Is, am I gonna see more? Is it something, what is it? Mm -hmm. And it was just a shadowy figure. And so as we're going out the parking lot, I noticed as we got closer, the figure just dissipated and all I saw was a tree and I went, whoa, <laughs> okay, still, all right, strange, but okay. So now I go home and uh, first of all, my husband and I rarely fight, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. We discuss things, but we don't really fight, okay? Right. Not, not often. Um, and so anyhow, um, so he starts an argument about a subject he hates to talk about. He uh, keeps on going at it, harping at it, uh, uh, covering it. Now we always, always, always go to bed by midnight. Now it's getting closer to one o'clock. Sounds like your little demon friend hopped a hitch to yeah, hitched a ride yeah. with you guys. Yeah, he hitched a ride, all right. Uh, and and uh, and I'm going. At one o'clock, I finally said to him, I says, I says, I says, John, I says, what is it that, that you don't, don't like talking about that subject? I said, uh, you don't like arguing, and it's one o'clock. I says, what's with you? Right. He stopped. He thought about it. He says, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. And I says, well, let's go to sleep. Yes. Well, at that point, uh, uh, we we kissed, we went to sleep, but I did not repent of arguing. Okay, so 
3 o'clock I wake up with a splitting headache. Oh no. A splitting headache. And I go to the bathroom and I'm rebuking migraines. I'm rebuking headaches. I'm rebuking anything I can think of. But it's not going away. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking and thinking, and I said, okay, Lynn, what happened? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We argued. Mm -hmm. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. I rebuke the demon of argument, and yes. I apologize for arguing, and you have no right, you have no privilege to be in me at this point, so out, now, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Gone, like that. Look at that. And those are my stories, demons exist. Yes, Thank they you. do. Yes. Do they you have any questions do. you wanted to ask? No, what I wanted to say uh -huh. is, you know, when you talked about that, that homeless man and how you bound the devil and he peeped in the closet, oh, yeah. it reminded me of the day I was going to Ralph's. Uh -huh. I was in Pasadena and I had parked my car close to Lake Avenue because everything halfway in the parking lot was totally taken. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I was approximately three bus lengths from the door, city bus lengths. So I would say I was close to 100 feet, right. I mean 150 feet, whatever. Uh -huh. All right. So here I am, I get out my car, and I hear this mouth going on and on and on from a distance. And I'm wondering, who is that? And th you talk about blasphemy. This, this was a young kid. And he was blaspheming God like crazy. <laughs> I never heard idea. an adult do that, let alone a kid. Yeah. So as I got closer, I was making out what he was saying. I said, oh, no, no. Now, the kid didn't see me because I'm further back behind Smile. the cars. And under my breath, I said, Satan, you're going to shut up. You are not going to blaspheme my father as long as I'm on this property. You shut your mouth and you stay quiet. Mm -hmm in Jesus' name. And I hear the, the voice just stop. I didn't wow. hear any more talking. Wow. So as I'm approaching the door now, I see who it is. I see where the voice was coming from. And the boy is glaring at me the whole time <laughs> as I get the into the store. The demons know who the it is. The demons know, even though the boy didn't yeah, hear Yeah, didn't hear. Book. Yeah, same, same exactly. situation. Yeah, they exactly. know. They know. And <clears throat> I got to show you how he was glaring so you can see the face. He was literally like... <laughs> That's sort of... Yeah, that's sort of how... How your guy yeah, was doing sort of. Yeah, sort <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay. And, yeah. and he didn't shut... I mean, he shut up, and I came out from the store at about half an hour later. He was dead quiet, but he was standing there glaring at me <laughs> all the way to my car. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for this uh, opportunity to tell my story. Yes, Appreciate thank it. you very much, Lynn. Wow. All right. So for you guys who don't know... You can take authority over these demons and your obedience will give you power over them.